Hi everyone, my name is Lainey Ray Kemper and my spotlight topic is music and mental health. Today I will be going over some of the positive effects that music can have on mental health and how it can help patients recover from mental illness and used as a tool um, for coping with mental illnesses. But before I get into it, I wanted to introduce myself and talk a little bit more about why I'm here and how I chose this topic. So I am a sophomore at Boise State University, currently majoring in health studies, where I will be pursuing a career in speech pathology after my undergraduate degree is complete. And I was interested in researching this topic because I personally listen to music throughout the day on a daily basis, and I have found that it has been a very helpful tool for me in processing through some of my emotions and day-to-day -day struggles, and I wanted to learn more about the real science behind why this happens and if it helps other people, and I was just very curious in learning more about that, and without further ado, I will get into my findings. So as a quick little overview, listening to music has been shown to have healing effects, especially for patients dealing with mental health issues. I found so much information about this topic and about how it's been helpful to patients dealing with mental illness, physical illness, all kinds of illnesses, and I thought that was super interesting because you wouldn't think a small thing like music could have such a powerful effect, but it actually does. Um, listening to music has been shown to reduce anxiety, stress levels, and even to lower blood pressure and pulse rate, as well as um, to increase oxygen saturation in the blood, which I thought was super interesting that something that's so mental can have such an effect on the physical aspects of the body as well. So why should we care? Uh, I found some very interesting statistics to from the Boise State website about the mental status, mental health status of Boise State students. Um, the most shocking statistic that I found is that 49.9% of Boise State students report experiencing moderate stress levels, and 15% of Boise State students report experiencing serious psych psychological stress. And this is very concerning because it shows that our students are not receiving adequate help in the area of mental health and well-being. Um, and another shocking statistic that I found was that 27% of Boise State students report receiving psychological or mental health services within the last 12 months, which this was a very surprising number to me because I know that so many people are dealing with mental illness, but I didn't know that that many Boise State students actually seek sought out help in the form of counseling services or medication. Um, and it's shocking to me too, to think about how that number just only represents the people that actually sought out help by themselves. And there are so many people that haven't looked for help yet and aren't included in that number, but are still dealing with these intense um, mental health issues. So finding techniques that can help it manage stress and anxiety is so important, especially for this age demographic and for Boise State students, um, and especially during these challenging times with COVID and everything else that's going on in our world currently. And although maybe not everyone is able to receive mental health services or medication, Finding small coping mechanisms that can help is very important, and music is one of those. So I looked into several different methods and ways that mental health services providers um, help their patients with different methods, and I found two main methods that I wanted to talk about today. The first one is guided imagery and music, or GIM. So basically, during a session of GIM, the healthcare provider will play some music, usually with a slow, slower tempo, um, most likely instrumental, and will ask the patient to describe images that come to mind during the playing of this music. So this has been shown to help patients process through complicated emotions and thoughts that they might not have otherwise been able to voice. 
Um, and this condition is called alexithymia, which is described as a condition characterized by difficulty in identifying and describing feelings coupled with externally oriented thinking. So alexithymia is something that typically goes along with depression and anxiety, where the person just starts to not be able to put their feelings into words and having a really difficult time processing through those emotions. And this method of music therapy has been shown to have very powerful effects in helping this condition. Another method that I found was mindful music listening, which um, is basically where a patient will be guided through a meditation, which is combined with music. So this helps to relax patients, um, help them stay calm and focus their minds. And the patient and counselor will work together to determine the best practice and the best way to go about this. And it can dif it differs varying on the patient, you know, the length of the meditation, the type of music selected. And those are the two main methods that I found that health healthcare providers will use with their patients. So this is a video that I wanted to show to talk about guided imagery and music. All right, so that video just was, gives a quick summary of what GIM can look like. And now we will move on to my next slide, which is about the effects that music can have on reducing stress and anxiety. So back to those statistics I was talking about before, about 50% of Boise State students reported experiencing moderate levels of stress. Uh, and this is a very high number and Music is a tool that can be used pretty much anywhere at any time, and it can be used for processing emotions and putting feelings into words, which is something that's difficult for a lot of people to do, especially those with anxiety. Uh, so music has been linked to lowering blood pressure, pulse rate, decreasing cortisol levels, increasing dopamine or happiness levels, and as well as increasing oxygen saturation. And a study showed positive results for patients who use music in combination with relaxation methods to reduce stress, which is like the mindful music practicing that I was talking about before. Another thing that I found amazing when I was doing my research is that music can lead to quicker recovery times as well as pain relief. So this is not necessarily something that relates directly to Boise State students, but I thought it was a very inf interesting information. So I found one study and I want to read this quote from it that describes the profound effects that music can have on recovery times. So patients in the study who listened to music were able to be removed from the ventilator at an average of six hours, whereas those who did not listen to music were able to be removed from the ventilator at an average of about nine hours. So this 
is referring to patients who had just undergone a surgery and talking about the difference in pain or the difference in recovery time between those who listened to music and those who did not. So this is a staggering difference of three hours between patients who listened to music and patients who did not. So even if music doesn't, even if music doesn't have a large effect, it still has some effect, which is honestly incredible and amazing to see that that was linked so closely. So another thing that I found is that music can reduce pain. One study showed patients recovering from a hernia repair surgery who listened to music less needed less morphine overall to recover than patients who did not listen to music, which is incredible. And obviously when you're recovering from something, you wanna be medicated, but the idea and the goal is to get off that medication as soon as possible so you don't develop a dependence to it and music can help with that. Another study I found is that in 2013, patients with fibromyalgia were assigned to listen to music for four weeks, which showed pain reduction and lower instance of symptoms of depression overall. These benefits were achieved after listening to music with a relatively slow tempo and lower pitch. Um, another thing that was mentioned was that it preferably be instrumental music without lyrics. Um, but if you do enjoy listening to music with lyrics more, I would recommend just listening to something a little more quiet with a slower beat um, instead of a fast, intense, upbeat tempo. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to talk about was music for different moods and how music can affect patients with depression because this is the most common illness, mental illness that I found talked about when I was researching this topic. So a study for patients with depression showed that depressed patients often become more and more unresponsive to positive feelings and emotions over time. They t tend to dwell on sad emotions and they use fewer and they use fewer emotional words to describe sad music. So patients who are depressed typically have a difficult time speaking their emotions and getting what they want to say out. And listening to music can help them to speak their feelings out loud and process through feelings and emotions. And I thought it was interesting that they used fewer emotional words to describe sad music. So how can we apply this to our community, Boise State students as a whole, and what's just the real world application behind this topic. So a few tips that I came up with that I think would be very helpful in, relate, in relation to how you can use music as a mental health coping mechanism. The first is to try establishing a meditation routine using music to supplement. This can just be 10 minutes a day, 10 minutes a week, something that just allows you to check in with your feelings and thoughts and take some quiet time to process through everything. And music can be used in addition to this as a tool for helping to process through those emotions. Another thing is to recognize that certain types of music can actually increase stress. So music with loud noises and loud words and uh, fast tempos can sometimes increase your stress levels. Not saying that this music should never be listened to, but if you're looking to kind of process through some emotions and take some quiet time to reflect, I would not recommend listening to more intense, stressful, stress-inducing music. Um, another final tip that I have to leave with you is to incorporate music into more parts of your daily routine, such as going for a walk and listening to music or listening to music while studying or doing homework. Um, just make sure when you're listening to music while studying or doing homework, it's um, without lyrics and calm music that can help you focus rather than distract you. Another thing would be to listen to calming music before bed and when you wake up in the morning just to start off and end your day with reflection and checking in to make sure you are processing through your emotions and feelings in a healthy way. And then these are my references. And I want to thank you all so much for listening and watching this presentation. I hope that you learned something and this presentation was very interesting for me to put together and I learned so much about 
the science behind music and mental health. And thank you all so much.